Oh, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and behind me is, uh, oh, I've sold all my cars. Actually for the last, well, month or so, I've solely been using my fiance's Nissan Pixo to get around. You know what I mean? Which has actually been a bit of a blessing on the wallet. That thing, well, it's zero pounds road tax a year and will average over 70 miles per gallon, which is, well, nuts. It is, however, let's say, a little bit lacking in the power department, though. 20. 21. Apart from the video you would have seen, well, a few days ago on my channel where I raced my fiance Katie in an Audi R8 to Edinburgh Castle. If you wanna know who won, go ahead and click the link on the screen now to watch that video. Apart from that, I haven't posted on this channel or really anywhere for a few months. I've been laying low and well, here's why. Firstly though, quick shout out to Cupra UK Media. Uh, at the moment, I'm rolling around in this Cupra Four Mentor VZ2. Um, it's the Golf R engined Four Mentor actually. So it's got the quad exhaust at the back which look really cool does not 60 in just under five seconds and as you can see it's a pretty decent sized wagon um, and so it's a really really privileged and lovely thing to be driving around in at the moment whilst I don't otherwise have another vehicle for the record I've only got that for the week and I have been literally driving that Nissan Pixo four well four or five times that now Anyway, why have I not been posting on YouTube? Well, there's a number of reasons. Number one is the title of this video that I have in fact sold all of my cars, all of my cars being the Porsche Boxster and the Range Rover, the 3.6 TD V8, the one that was in Stornoway gray with the black interior. Lovely, lovely car. They are both gone. And so therefore content has been a little bit more difficult. I will touch on very briefly, but won't go into details, but from a personal perspective, it's been quite a difficult time. There's been some things going on with the ones close to me and that's always difficult to deal with. However, more so, I've just been struggling quite a lot with my own mental health, with my motivation, you know, not wanting to get out of bed and do things. And it gets really tough and you get yourself into a little bit of a rut. And I guess what you could say in the most pretentious of ways is I've had a little bit of writer's block. I've been a bit stuck as to what to do, not only on the channel, but just in my life. It's just been one of those transformational times. However, I won't dwell on that too much because I'm feeling great now. And I know we all suffer from time to time with various things, but it is a good thing to bring up because I am human, just like the rest of you. And I'm sure whether they say it or not, lots of people in a position like me suffer and struggle with the same thing. And moreover, and this will go hand in hand with the reason that I've sold the cars, just my financial situation and the ability to facilitate videos and to purchase cars for content has been more or less non-existent over the past few months. And so creating stuff that I would think is meaningful and that I want to put out on the channel and that I'm proud of has been somewhat, not impossible, I'd never say impossible, but very challenging. And so now I've just decided to sort of give myself a bit of a factory reset, make a good go of it and try to turn things around a little bit so that we can get back on our feet, which we are, by the way, everything is absolutely fine. And I'm super excited to show you this Cupra that I'm driving at the moment, actually. We'll jump in the car now and we can elaborate a little bit more on certain points. I'll explain why the cars have sold, although the reason purely is essentially financial. And um, I'll explain a little bit about how I sold them and who they went to. And yeah, let's just go for a little drive, have a bit of a catch up because it has been a good old while and I don't intend to take a big hiatus. Again, I intend to keep this channel going at a much more regular and fast flowing pace now. So invite any comments below on stuff you want to see. It's always a massive help for people, especially like me. Anyway, let's jump in the Cupra because my arm's about to fall off and it is literally 40 degrees in the UK. <sighs> Tripod acquired, <sighs> back in the car. So fortunately in the interim where I do actually have no cars apart from the Pixo, uh, Cupra have been very kind. They've lent me this Four Mentor. It's a Cupra Four Mentor VZ2, which is the 310 PS engine. Uh, it's also in the Golf R. So it's a lovely power plant, really fun thing to nip around in the next week or so. And well, yes, I do want more cars on the channel, of course. 
BMW M6 V10 is top of the list. I want another Range Rover right now. I'm debating on whether to get a newer L405 shape or to stick with the L322 and maybe get myself a five litre supercharged model. I don't know. There's other cars that I'm desperately lusting after as well. I mean, I really fancy a Jag. In fact, Katie loves Jags for some reason and I'm sure we'll be getting one of them at some point too. Jaguar F-Type though, that's something I've always, always wanted and a Roadster version too. My friend Ben, actually Ben Rain, who also has a YouTube channel, has just bought one of them. But it does all boil down to money and one of the things I can do to help my financial situation is to create more content, whether it is just the sort of update type videos like this, although I felt after basically not uploading for two or three months, it was probably worth doing a little bit of an update. More videos, more regular content will help my income, of course, which I can put into pots of money, of which there aren't any at the moment, for future car purchases. Honestly, it's really frustrating. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing loads of really cool cars come up that could be great for opportunity, not just for me, but also for content, but just not having the funds to do anything about it. So I am really working hard behind the scenes to try and generate some more revenue for myself so that I can pour it back into this channel in terms of some cars. The other thing, I'll tell you what, the, the number one car right now that I'm desperately, desperately want to get is a Bentley Continental GT Flying Spur. Yes, I'm a little bit weird. Yes, I'm very different. Everyone would say, why would you not just get the normal Continental GT? I want the Flying Spur. It's long wheelbase. It's a long wheelbase car that will do almost 200 miles an hour. And I think it would be the perfect continuation on from my former 7 Series. But very privileged indeed that I can consider all these things whilst driving around in someone else's lovely, lovely car for the time being. But yeah, I welcome all of your comments below actually as to what you'd like to see. And of course, when there are appropriate cars and appropriate situations for them, there's gonna be more challenge content. In fact, I've got another Audi R8 coming next month to which we're doing a fuel economy test with a twist, let's say. I wonder if any of you can work out where I'm coming from with that. I'll be very intrigued to know, but that's gonna be mega. I can't wait to film some of the stuff that I've got planned for later on this year and also into next year. The videos are not going anywhere. I had a little bit of a hiatus, a little bit of a break because I didn't really have anything to film with and also just felt a little bit down in the dumps about that situation. But you know what? Money doesn't grow on trees. We all have our own financial situations and difficulties. And I'm staying quietly confident that if I keep working hard in the future, the situation might be different and I will be able to go and pluck crazy cars from Auto Trader that I see at a moment's notice. But I'm just gonna do a bit of work in the interim and you might see a few more videos like this. As this thing is not slow. It is not slow at all, especially after having been driving that Pixo, which does 0 to 60 in never, as you saw. This feels like a rocket ship, it really does. It's amazing what you can choose these days and call a family car. Because I've been driving like that and still averaging over 30 miles per gallon in this thing. It's really, really, really impressive, actually. I think this thing looks really properly sick as well, actually. All the bronzy accents I'm a massive fan of. It's got a nice stance and great view over the front. I did not expect that when I got in this car yesterday when it got delivered, actually. It's got this huge bonnet and it's sort of an emporious view. It reminds me of the Range Rover even. Obviously not as high up, but you feel like you're in a muscle car and I was not expecting that at all. Really adds to the whole aura of the thing. Feels a bit muscular and yeah. So where did my cars go? Where did the Porsche go? Where did the Range Rover go? So the first car to leave was the Range Rover. Now there was uh, the Raffle Shack competition that I ran on that car. Not enough tickets were sold. Uh, however, a guy called Paul Fox did win just over five grand, I think, from the proceeds of that competition. Um, so the car didn't sell, but it did end up going then when I put it up privately to a, a lovely chap down in Southampton who was super excited to take it off my hands and he plans on using that properly. They do an annual road trip to Croatia, 
I think either this year or next year he's planning on taking the Range Rover. So if you're watching, I hope you're well. I hope the car's been good to you. And uh, it was lovely to meet you. And I'm glad that the Range Rover went to a pleasant home. Same can be said for my Porsche Boxster as well. That sold about a month ago to a lovely chap in London. And he just wanted, well, he just wanted a Porsche. I completely understand. Something nice to drive around in at the weekend. And well, he couldn't have picked a better car because that thing is awesome. Now you would have actually been seeing a lot more content with that Porsche Boxster, which I'd had, uh, well, planned for a long time. I'd booked to take it to the Nürburgring last month, I think July we're talking about now. And uh, actually it was the second time this year I'd attempted that trip. The first time it didn't work out because of various COVID restrictions. Uh, but this second time, everything was great. I got some new tires fitted on the car. I got some new brakes fitted, as you saw uh, in one of the videos at La Rose Porsche. The car was all ready to go until I got to the Euro Tunnel and the serpentine belt failed. It snapped completely. And uh, the reason for that was the air conditioning compressor failed, causing the belt to split. So I was left basically in the queue for passport control at the Euro Tunnel, literally about to get on the train to France with a big billowing cloud of smoke because obviously the water pump had failed at that point and the car was overheating. Very luckily, I wasn't paying much attention. A subscriber who happened to be behind me in that queue came up to my window and said, you might want to turn that off, to which I looked in the rear you know, windscreen mirrors and it was quite a uh, shocking discovery. Okay, so literally about to board the Euro Tunnel and uh, the car is on fire. I don't know if you can see that, but there's smoke billowing. And so, well, I'm just gonna stay away. So I've managed to limp the car back to this main car park area. I've taken off the engine cover and also this at the back here, only to expose that I've had a complete pulley failure. This has completely, as you can see there, ripped. But um, looks like my Germany trip has come to a very quick, abrupt end already. So unfortunately, I never did make that trip to the Nürburgring. I was about a thousand pounds down on that trip and then had to spend a further grand getting the car recovered and then repaired at La Rose Porsche to get it prepped for sale. I'm sure you can understand why I didn't feel like attempting that Germany trip a third time. I think at that point, I wanted to wipe my hands of that car and that whole trip that just hadn't been working, which is a real shame because I was so looking forward to taking that Porsche around the Nürburgring but there will be more Nürburgring trips coming, well, very soon actually. So um, it's an utter shame about that, but the Porsche and the Range Rover did go to really lovely homes, which I'm very happy about. And it's the first time actually, I've not had my own personal car since I passed my driving test when I was 17, which was, well, eight years ago now. I'm an old man these days, closer to 30 than I am 20. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's lovely to be back on camera. I genuinely haven't filmed anything like this since, well, the R8 video, which we filmed back in June. Um, of course, I was meant to be filming that Porsche content, but as you heard, and as you've seen probably some clips of, didn't quite go to plan, did it? Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. It is lovely to be back on camera. I hope you're all well. I'm looking forward to reading your comments on this video and rest assured some, some cool content is gonna be coming back very, very soon. If you fancy helping out at all, you can, I believe, do a special super like these days where you can leave a small donation. Or if you don't want to exchange any monetary help, which nobody has to whatsoever, just give the video a normal thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and tell your friends, because that's really what's going to help these videos get seen. And uh, I can't thank you enough in advance. Goodbye, everyone, for now. But I promise you it won't be three months this time. It will be, hopefully three days or something until you see me again. Thank you all, enjoy the rest of your week. Speak to you very, very soon.